Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International, bringing you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. Living Streams, we meet behind the trade fair, behind Zenith College at the Life Cathedral, the Zoe Chapel in the Life Cathedral. And we do two services on Sundays from 7 to 9 and from 10 to 12 on Sundays in the morning. And then on Wednesdays in the evening, 6.30 to 8, we do a midweek service. Make a day to us and you will be blessed. Now this morning, I, I'm going to uh, look at a topic that has been of interest to me, and it's, it's been uh, very mysterious, and I've been wondering. And uh, you can find that in, in Exodus chapter, chapter 9, and I want to call it Stone Cold Impossibilities. Stone Cold Impossibilities. In Exodus chapter 9, verse 12, I find something that is very interesting. And the Bible said, and, and, and Exodus uh, from 3 to onwards, you know, from 1 to this, talks about the deliverance of Israel from the hands of Egypt or from the hands of the Egyptians, especially from the dominant role of Pharaoh in their lives. May God find a way to remove every Pharaoh from our lives. But this is how God delivered them with power and all those things. Now, I find something very interesting. I mean, Moses had a rod and Moses was given and empowered and the things that Moses did, the miracles, I mean, the, the things that, uh, and they were not just miracles but, but, uh, for the sake of miracles, but punitive miracles. That is, mar miracles that was punishing Egypt. You know, uh, one of them was the, was the uh, a, a plague of, of boils. I mean, so you're walking there, then boils, and then the, I mean, oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, what was that? You know, and then they, they, they had a plague of tumors. They, they had a plague of lice. I mean, everybody, you scratch your head. Oh, man, man. And the Bible said one plague after the other. The first few plagues, like the first five plagues, I mean, were very terrible, disastrous, I mean, uh, plagues that affected the people of Egypt. I mean, it was very, very punitive. And it, it, it was exacting a toll on agriculture. It was exacting a toll on health. It was exacting a toll on commerce. It was exacting a toll on everything. The whole economic, this thing, of, uh, the economy of Egypt was brought to a standstill by the demonstrative ability of Moses. Now here comes the interesting thing. The first time the Bible says um, Pharaoh hardened his heart. That is, uh, when, when, when Moses threw down the rod, you know, and the rod became a snake and other people too threw down their rods, the magicians threw down their rods, and their rods also became a snake. And Moses' snake swallowed the rods of the, of the, of the magician. Pharaoh said, Bleh. I mean, Pharaoh, Pharaoh would not be moved. And when the plagues began to affect the Egyptians, Pharaoh called Moses and told Moses, beg God for me. And when you beg God for me, uh, for him to remove this place, and I'll let you go. And then afterwards, the Bible says, and Pharaoh hardened his heart. Look at the word that was used. Pharaoh made his heart stone cold. He made it stone cold. And the first time, he, he, he hardened his heart. The second time, Pharaoh hardened his heart. The third time, Pharaoh hardened his heart. And all those times, Pharaoh was the one hardening his heart. That means he, he was intransigent. He refused to be moved. He, he was unbendable. He, he was so entrenched in his, in his rebellion against God. He was so entrenched in it that he refused. The Bible says he voluntarily, he by an act of his will, he by decision in his heart hardened his heart against, against what God was saying. He deliberately did it. Now here comes the interesting thing. After the fifth or sixth plague, in Exodus chapter 9 verse 12, 
I come upon something that is startling. This time it was not Pharaoh hardening his heart. But the Bible says, and God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Whoa, 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 whoa. That means Pharaoh had hardened his heart for a period of time. And this time, it wasn't him hardening his heart. God said, I will harden your heart. That means God said, listen, I'm going to make it impossible for you to repent. I'm going to make it impossible for you to change. I'm going to make it impossible for you to have a change of, of, the, uh, of your decision, a change of heart, a change of character. I'm going to make it impossible for you to do it. Why? Because I'm setting you up for a fall. I'm setting you up for great disaster. I'm going to wipe out all the firstborn sons of Egypt. I'm going to draw your armies into a Red Sea and let two thirds of your army just die. Bury them under a distance of an avalanche of water. You will lose life. You will lose your firstborn. I'm going to destroy your city and I'm making it impossible for you to even beg. I'm going to make it impossible for you to even, even plead. I'm going to make it impossible for you to even repent. Now Pharaoh had entered a place where stone cold impossible. It is impossible for him for a heart change. Are you aware that sometimes God draws the line and says, okay, you want to go that way? I'll take you up that way. That's where you want to go. And the Bible says it in, 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 in the Bible says, sometimes there are some people whose consciences are seared with hot iron. That they can't even discern what is right and what is wrong. They read a place where they don't know anymore. Their consciences are seared with hot iron. That means every vestige of righteousness and every vestige of goodness and every vestige of virtue has been erased. So they don't have any memory. They don't have any memory in the, in the bank of their conscience. It has been obliterated. Stone cold impossibilities. You come to a place where the Bible says, it was God who said, okay, I'm setting you up for a fall. So you keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to even encourage you to do it. I'm going to remove your moral compass. I'm going to remove that thing which will tell you, the, the, even the compass of fear. I'm going to remove all those things because I'm setting you up. I want to teach you a lesson. But prior to all this, prior to God handing his heart, he was given an opportunity. So that's why the Bible says today, if we hear his voice, harden not your heart. Because you might harden, you might harden, and you will never know when God locks it up and says, okay, stay here. I'm going to use you as an example to teach others. Stone cold impossibilities. Don't get there. See you later.